Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Okay, this is going to be interesting. It is 2.20 on a Tuesday afternoon, and I am standing here with Mark Garrett, and your official title with the Highway Patrol is? State Traffic Officer. State Traffic Officer Mark Garrett, and Mark and I met the other day in Pasadena. You kind of stopped me, scared me to death. Oh, I didn't mean to scare you, but <laughs> I saw you there. I knew it was you. I was kind of excited. I wanted to meet you, uh -huh. and I uh, motioned to you, came over, and we had a nice little conversation. Right. Uh, Mark watches KCET and watches our program and actually invited us to come spend a day with him to see what a uh, average day in the life of a highway patrolman is like. So we are here. We have absolutely no idea what this day is going to bring, do we? No, we never do. That's what makes it fun. Is it going to be, is there going to be a little bit of everything involved in this? Could it be a slow day? Could it be a, what, what, what is an average day like? Well, there really is never an average day on this job. I think any cop will tell you it's always different. It makes it fun. Uh, right now, we have a crash out here in Pastina that's working right now. We get some lanes blocked, and uh, it might go that way all day long with crashes, or it might be real slow and do nothing but check on motorists and write a few tickets. Now, that was the other thing that was interesting. I asked you if we rode along with you and got out of the car as you're giving someone a ticket. See, my inclination would be to think that they're not going to want us filming them getting a ticket. But what did you say? Most people are camera hogs. And most people, take myself for example, uh -huh. most people love being in front of the camera. And uh, most of the people you stop out there are nice to begin with. And uh, I've never had a ride along with a camera before, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. But I would imagine that most of the public out there is going to be more than, more than happy to be on film. Even though it, they're getting a ticket. I would, I would, I would, I would guess so. Especially if they recognize you, I think they're going to be, they're going to be inclined to want to be on, on television. Well, we'll can. see what happens because we have no idea. Where are we right now? Which station is this? This is the, uh, this is the Altadena area office of the Highway Patrol, and we're right on the 210. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Southern California, we're about a half a mile from the Rose Bowl, right over the, the across the street here from the Rose Bowl. And this is your territory. This is our our territory here. This is our our home office for for this area of the Highway Patrol, and we handle a, a large area, large geographical area, including all those mountains behind you. You can't see because of the smog right now. But <laughs> this, this is, is also your hometown. Um, actually, I, I, was, I grew up in Alhambra, uh -huh. so, which is just about you know, five miles from here. Uh, so it is my hometown pretty much, my backyard. I grew up here. It makes it fun to work here. You ever run into your old buddies when you're handing out tickets? Uh, yeah, I have. I've yeah, I've done more than run into you. I've actually arrested a couple of people that I went to high school with. <laughs> okay, let's get started. We have no idea this is going to be a real adventure, riding with the Highway Patrol. These are the real stories of the Highway Patrol. We're off. Now, I would think the thing you see more than anything, going down the road like this, are people decreasing their speed as they see you in their rear view mirror. Uh, I mean, does that kind of get to be a kind of a joke it's after basically, a while? You've got to keep changing lanes quite a bit to get around the people slowing down. Because they don't, they see you coming. Right. Right, especially in this car here, uh, it's, a, it's a large car, we've got overhead lights in it. Now when you drive some of the other vehicles like the, the Ford Mustangs with no lights on top of the roof, they're, they're quite a bit stealthier and they're hard for people to see. You can sneak up on them. Right. Do you like to sneak up on people? Well, it makes my job a little, a little easier, that's for sure. <laughs> it's all right to admit that, isn't it? Oh, sure. Well, yeah, you, you, you got to sneak up on them if you want to get them stopped, if you want to see them in the first place. I mean, even with this car, we, we have to sneak around a little bit. But we're out here, we're in plain view, we're out here for everyone to see. And if they're, if they're looking in their mirrors, if they're, if they're being uh, 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 an aware observant. driver, yeah. observant, they're, they're going to see you pretty much in time to in time, avoid right. getting a ticket. Exactly. LAS. 6497 vehicles, 1124. Uh, do they have help in route? I, I missed the first part of the transmission. Uh, they requested a 1021, but we were unable to do anything on the connector road, unknown hazard. 104, it's a negative hazard. It's at the end of the trans road on the right shoulder. I'll be at the end of the trans road on the right shoulder, negative hazard. We'll advise service test. 
Do you have to get out? I'm going to go and check and make sure no one keeled over in there and make sure that no one's sick or injured or anything okay, else like get that. Out, Louis. So you really never know what you're going to find when you come on a situation. No, you like don't. That. No, someone made a call here from the call box and uh, obviously it, the flash was on. Someone was just here. But maybe uh, someone came by and picked them up. I don't know. But now there's now. another car up there. Yeah, it looks like it's abandoned also. We'll go yeah. up and check that one. Now that's kind of strange, isn't it? It's kind of unusual. I mean, it's just probably coincidence that two cars broke down close together, most likely. All right, while we're here, come on down here just uh -huh. a second. This is as good a place as any for you to answer that question I asked What's you. What's that question? About you can always go as fast as you want to go. Well, I go as fast as I have to go to do the job. Right. And uh, quite honestly, it's impossible to come out here at 55 miles an hour for eight hours and, and to enforce the speed limit and enforce traffic violations. It's, it's virtually impossible. The reality is we have to come out here in speed to find speeders. Traffic's moving 65 miles an hour all day. We've got to stay in there with it to find out to find the, the violators. So, yeah, we're 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 driving faster than the speed limit most times on the job. On the job. Now, what about when you get off the job? When I get off the job, I'm subject to the same enforcement contacts from police officers you are. What they choose to do with them when they find me is up to them. Uh huh. That's their business. And when you pull out your driver's license, if you're ever stopped, you don't ever just happen to pull out your highway patrol badge at the well, same Well, you know, I can show you right now that it just so happens that my license is kept in the same wall as my badge, so I've got to pull so that out. So look at this. If he's ever stopped for speeding and he pulls out his license, he pulls it out like this. So well, we're not operating under the same. I, uh, All I've got to pull out is my KCET <laughs> press card. Well, that will work with me. And that the quarter will give me a cup of coffee somewhere. <laughs> Believe me, I've tried that before. <laughs> Uh-oh. Got some people here standing with their backs to traffic, which is not all too safe. Let's see what their problem is. They don't even know we're here, so you can see how dangerous it is to stand around like this with your back to traffic. They don't um, know we're here yet. No, they still don't know we're here. They can't hear because the traffic is so loud. Let's go oh, he's seen us. <laughs> Let's go up and talk to him. Hi. What's going on? Oh, the truck is broke down. Do you have some help coming? No. No, we don't call nobody. Yet. No one's coming? Have you tried the call box? The call box down there? Uh -huh. Did you try it? Yeah. They got the electrical pump on the wheel. Why don't I step on over here, guys? And it seems not to work. Hey, what? This one? On the rattlesnake? Right right here. Really? Yeah. What did he say? He one said he saw a rattlesnake over here. There's a rattlesnake over yeah, here. Right here. Well, first of all, we'll keep an eye on that, but we want to get you out of here if we can. Is there someone you can call to, uh, to help you get out of here? I'm going to call right now. Is there someone you can call, though? Do you know anybody to call? Yeah, my boss. OK, all right. I'll tell you what. Why don't you two wait in the truck, OK? You have some seat belts in there? OK, yes. wait in there. Keep your seat belts on. Okay. And so you go down to the call box and, and call for some help. Okay? Now, if they don't get anybody to come out here for you, they'll call me. I'll, I'll come back out here and check on you, okay? Okay. All right. But wait in the truck. You don't want to get bit by the rattlesnake over here, right? All right. Okay. So wait in the truck. All right. Now, that's why they didn't see you coming up behind them. They were looking at the rattlesnake over I, I here. I guess that's probably a little more dangerous than traffic right there, huh? And I got to tell you, I'm not the least bit interested in going over and finding the rattlesnake they were looking at. No, I'm not either. We might as well go ahead and mosey on out of here. So this was taken care of easy. Yeah, the, yeah, the do you get a lot of do you get a lot of breakdowns? Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean you got a you got a freeway. A lot of cars are gonna break down on you, so So this is common. Oh yeah. This it's real common. This is out here all, all the time. But people don't know that they should stay in the car. No, I mean that's a real biggie. I mean when you compare the difference between staying out here, a 180 pound body versus a car, as compared to at least being wrapped in some steel, sitting in a car, it's a lot safer to be in there. 
and uh, but it's still dangerous. They could be hit even. Oh, sure. Being out here in the freeway is dangerous. Period. Where it doesn't matter where you are, who you are, it's dangerous to be out here. But if you do break down, have an emergency, the best you can do is try to protect yourself by sitting in that vehicle for as long as you can. You just spotted that person, right didn't here. you? Right here, he's going well over 70. The guy in the Honda right here. So we're going to go ahead and signal and move on over behind him. Oh, boy. He's already spotted us, and he threw out his anchor there, kind of slowed down pretty quick. But See, I feel terrible right now. Oh, don't, don't feel terrible. I do this every day. Okay, he knows he's caught. Right. He's pulling over. Mm -hmm. And what's going through his head right now? I know, because I've been stopped <laughs> before. <laughs> I couldn't tell you for sure. We probably couldn't say it on the air. Probably not. Probably not. You'd be surprised. Most people are really nice, and some are even grateful you stopped and gave them a ticket, which is pretty surprising sometimes, but they are. Ford, Ford, October 31 of oh, sir. Hi, I stopped you for your speed. Frame, Can I see your license registration, please? Thank you. Can you hand them to me? Thanks. Thank you. Sir, do you still live in Claremont? All right. Okay, I paced it about 72 miles an hour, and I'm going to uh, give you a citation for. Uh, one over the speed limit, okay? I'll be right back. Are you going to go home and kick the dog? No, actually, I'm going to be late to work is what's going to happen. <laughs> so I was in a little bit of a hurry uh, to get to work on time, and uh, not going to happen today. <laughs> I'll do it. Keep a copy here. And there's your other paperwork. Now, when you leave, be real careful. Just go ahead and... Uh, build your speed before you get back in traffic, all right? You bet. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. You know, this is, it's real interesting. Is he a typical, is that a typical reaction uh, of a driver? Uh, what is a typical reaction? Pretty much, they're, they're, they're usually neutral. Uh, uh, I'd say if, if there's a typical reaction, that's it right there, yeah. Just kind of lethargic. Right. He resigned. He knows he ain't, he knows he ain't caught speeding. Nice guy, signs a ticket, and uh, he's on his way. As we pull off from giving that first ticket, brings up the question everybody asks, is there a quota? No. For tickets? No, if, if there were a quota. Well, you've heard this before. All the time. Yeah. No, I, I think most guys kind of wish they were there were a quota. We'd go out and write a quota in the first hour of work and wouldn't do anything the rest of the day, half yeah. the guys. I mean, if there were a quota, but no, there isn't. There isn't. We would go out and write what we see. And, uh, I mean, of course, there's, a, there's an average amount of work, like in any job, that your supervisors and, and the department expect you to, to fall into, an average amount of work. If you go out there and never write a ticket, obviously you're going to hear something from your sergeant or your captain. Yeah. Um, but there's no quota, there's no minimum amount of tickets you have to write. Because don't, uh, I would think that people might uh, use that argument to you, don't they? Oh, all the time. You're just trying to meet your quota? Sure. Sure, you, you, you get that a lot? Especially near the end of the month. Someone gets stopped on uh, on the 28th and they they think that you're they're, they're getting stopped because it's the end of the month and you gotta catch up. And so they'll say that to you? Oh, all, all the time. Sure. Now how do you react if somebody says that to you? I basically tell them the same thing that I tell you. I mean, do you just smile and grin and kill them with kindness? Well, yeah, sometimes people say it in a, in a, in a joking manner or they'll be kind of mean about it, but, but it depends. Uh, if someone's very irate, usually the best thing to do is to, is to, to say as little as possible, but it's going, only going to inflame them more. But if they're in a, in a good mood, you explain to them, well, sir, ma'am, there's no quota. I'm just, I saw you speeding or saw you doing this or that, and, and that's why I stopped you for no other reason. We can stop anybody, any place, for any reason, uh, any any uh, reason that got probable cause. Uh, we, we handle a lot of streets. We handle a lot of county area. Well, maybe we'll go over there if we have time. Now, wait a minute. You say you can stop anybody, anywhere, for any reason, any, any legal, violation? Any, any, any legal reason. So sure. you could go in to the city of Los Angeles, into LAPD's area, That's and stop someone. We just came from there. Sure. Uh-huh. 
Wow, I, I don't the think I'd is, ever thought about that. The slogan is for, for uh, the Highway Patrol is all, all roads, all codes. That means we can stop anybody, any place for anything. And we don't need to be in a car. We can, on foot or in a car, we have full peace officer authority anywhere in the state of California. Um, there's a variety of things that, that we enforce. Mechanical violations, tenant windows, falling too close, lane changes. And of course, DUI uh, is one of our primary objectives is to, is to enforce the DUI laws. Why are you a highway patrolman? Well, to be honest with you, uh, I had a few friends that were uh, highway patrol officers for a lot of years. And a guy that's a few years older than me. And uh, they all told me how much they loved it. They all told me that it was a great job. You have a lot of freedom. Um, you're responsible for yourself a lot. And uh, what do you mean you're responsible? Well, in other words, I mean, look at where we are. We're out, out in the freeway, and and I'm I'm pretty much my own boss. Um, within the department rules and regulations, I'm pretty much my own boss out here. And I kind of go where I want, I do what I want, I stop who I want, uh, and, I, and I perform the job, like I said, within the departmental uh, uh, regulations, the way that I, I feel like it. And it, it's, a, it's a really good feeling. It's a, it's a great job, it really is. Do you feel like you're making a difference? Sometimes you do, sometimes. Uh, you feel like you're making a difference when people when people indicate that to you. In other words, if you help somebody, uh, simple things like changing a tire or uh, at accident scenes, sometimes people are very, very grateful. And, and you see it in their eyes and you can hear it in their voice. And when you uh, come across things like that, that's when it feels that you, you have made a difference. And so much, not, I mean, not so much from a, a law enforcement point of view, I guess, but really from a personal point of view, um, you feel that people uh, have maybe found a new, a new faith that, that in, in law enforcement because because you treated them well, and that's when it makes that's when it, it, it makes a job really rewarding, and worthwhile. We have someone right here, it was right in front of us, that was going about 70 miles an hour, kind of with traffic, and for some reason just took off, and they're going about 82, 83 miles an hour now. Right here. Right in, right in front of us, about 83 miles an hour. They haven't seen us, and here's a person here that if they use their mirrors, they would realize that, it, that a high patrol officer was right behind her, and probably she wouldn't tell her. She, she knows now, but it's a little bit too late. But she was directly in front of us for a while, and moved over and just took off. But here's a prime example of what I was telling you earlier, that if, if I'm not going with the flow of traffic, I'm not, not going to be able to enforce the law. If we had been going 55 miles an hour, we never would have been around this person to begin with. Uh, they would have just driven past and kept going. So unfortunately, you do have to come out here and drive with the flow of traffic um, in, in order to, to find your violators. Right by the call box. Perfect. That's fine. She can call her attorney. <laughs> <laughs> now, you just told me something interesting. I asked you why we were taking an exit, and what did you answer? Well, I said that if you sit in the same, the same traffic for too long, it gets kind of stale. If you don't see any violations, you, you've got to get off the freeway and either go the other direction or get back on. Stale traffic. Well, yeah, you see the same people over and over and uh, for three or four miles, and no one's doing anything wrong. So they, they, they're okay. You want to get off and, and, uh, and see if you can pick up another group of traffic. Turn around, go in the opposite direction. Or, or getting, you know, getting off and going the same direction either way. Uh -huh. And uh, have some traffic passing you. So you can get back on and the traffic pass. Tra so we're going in the same direction. Sure. You just uh -huh. got off, right. slowed down a little bit because right. we had to wait for the light. Right. And now we're going back right. into some fresh traffic. Some fresh traffic, exactly. <laughs> Whoa, look at you. Now, unlike this guy here in the fast lane, he's been he's been in front of us for about the last three miles. You're going after this guy up here. You're right. See, I didn't even yeah. know you were you were looking at him the whole time we were talking. Yeah, I've been watching him for about, oh, about two, two and a half minutes. Really? Yeah. 
So you lock on to something and stick with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes you'll see somebody that's, that appears to be going a little bit faster in traffic, and the next thing you know, they're going 60 miles an hour or 55, and you kind of you kind of lose interest in them. But uh, when you do lock onto something good like this, and he's been going about 80 the last two miles or three miles. So we're going to stop this guy right we're here. We're going to stop him right here. I'm going to try to wait for a better spot. There's a blind curve up here uh, that I don't want to make a stop on if I can help it. It's kind of dangerous for everyone involved. Now this person, I believe is a female, she's, she's seen us and slowed down, but I've already got the pace on her and I already decided to stop her. So. She's ticket material. Oh, definitely. Definitely ticket material. She doesn't know it, but she's going to be signing up soon. She? She's, I'm going to get her autograph. Yeah. Is that what you call it? Well, I guess that's what it is. Ah, signature. How's that? Now, wait a minute. She's going. Yep. Ma'am, move to the right. The right. The right shoulder. The right shoulder. Yes, the right shoulder. Let's go. The right shoulder. Build your speed up. Build your speed up. Faster. Faster. Now let's move to the exit. Get off the freeway. All the way over. Keep going. Keep going. Is she nervous? Is that it? Oh, she I'm sure she is. No. I'm sure she is. Keep going. Off the freeway, ma'am. Off the freeway. Yeah, I'm sure she's nervous. But here's another case. Now here's a case that you asked me earlier about people doing things because they don't know or because they can't do it. Or Okay, make a left turn. A left turn. Um, but the California Vehicle Code requires you to slow to the right and stop when the red light is illuminated behind you. Slow to the right. Slow and, and move to the right, not to the left. So here's someone who's either very nervous or forgot or is not familiar with that requirement. Hello, ma'am. Hello, officer. Hi. The reason I stopped you is uh, for your speed. You're going about 80 miles an hour. Can you your license, drive. please? Yeah, you were moving right along. I didn't really could see my speed, but the thermometer is a little off. It is off? How do you know that? Because it's, it's, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's why I couldn't really determine. I thought I was going the regular speed limit. Okay. We need to get that fixed. Oh, I know. I okay. know. I'm putting in the shop now because, I mean, I didn't have the money then, but I have the money now. So All probably right. be done this weekend. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Now, you were just stopped. Why did, why did you stop her? What was the violation? The violation was yeah exceeding exceeding the maximum speed limit. Did you think you were speeding? No, I didn't think I was speeding. Uh -huh. I thought I was going the regular speed limit in that fast lane. How fast was she going? She went 81 miles an hour. You going 81? And see, I thought I was going like 60. You do 55, 60 in that fast lane, right? Well, yeah, that means pe people do. Right. Yeah. So that's why I thought I was going. You know about that um that speed. I didn't realize I was going over that. Well, you're sure being nice about it. Aren't you kind of well, mad at this guy? I, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? If he said that I was going over 85, even though I feel, like the, I feel that I didn't, but if he said that I was, I mean, well, I can't, how can I dispute that? Yeah. Well, are you going to go to traffic school or are you just going to pay the ticket? When did you get your last speeding ticket? Uh, probably about six or seven years ago. So you can go to traffic school. Yeah, that's probably why I would prefer to go there. <laughs> the pay the ticket, don't tell me how much money, how much the ticket would cost. And you're still smiling about it. I mean, what can, what can I do? Am I supposed to get outraged and be upset or something? Well, for good, make better yeah. television if she yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, what? Sorry. Well, I mean, got, <laughs> you've got a nice person here. <laughs> I, was just I told awkward. you most of them were nice. <laughs> I mean, I can't most people wanted to nice. see a fight. Oh. I'm not a violent person, so you're not going to see that. He didn't believe him. I told him that most people I stop are nice. Okay, well, so you're I prov you're proving myself. my point. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be right back. Yeah. He's What'd a you... likable kind of a guy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's likable. He's handsome, too. <laughs> All right, Mr. Robinson. I was telling him, I guess I better stay out the fast lane from now on. Well, I mean, that'd be a bad idea. Yeah, right. And that way, when you're in the right lane, you can. You can, you can get over the right shoulder easier if he, if he gets stopped again. Yeah, that's true. Which will never happen again, right? No, it won't happen again. I know. Like I said, I'm staying off the fast lane. I, I, I go at a little slower <laughs> speed. <laughs> okay. I have to tell you, uh, thank you for, for being so nice. Oh, well, thank you. You're a nice officer. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad it's on tape because no one ever believe it. So. <laughs> He's very nice. <laughs> Handsome, too.
too. Oh my goodness, let me get out of here. Yeah, I didn't want to tell you that. Yeah, she was I know. talking about how handsome That's you are. That's why he kept me away from the car. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. I'd, I'd like to say I look forward to seeing you again under better circumstances. Exactly. Not like this. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, this has been a very interesting afternoon. I won the bet because we stopped. The viewers would never know it because we weren't able to use the tape. We stopped five or six people, and only two of them wanted us to tape it. They were all embarrassed. They didn't want to be on TV. They, they said no. I'm so surprised. You're surprised. I'm, I'm surprised. not. You're, you won. Why are you surprised? Well, I mean, from my experience, it, it, it seems like most people love to be in front of the camera. But on the other hand, I haven't had to deal with it from the point of view of, of them being on camera when they're stopped for violating the law. Right. So they're, they're perspective is a little bit different than what I'm used to. Because if I were stopped, I wouldn't want a camera sticking in my face. That's understandable. Which brings to point the other thing, real stories of the highway patrol. Yeah. I watch that a lot, and uh -huh. it's real exciting. We've had an exciting afternoon, but not, I don't know whether much of this would have made that show. It's no, been I don't low think anything, key. anything would have today. No, so it's been low key. is this more like the average day and I mean you know the idea is it doesn't always have to be gangbusters does no it? this is more like the average day I mean if there's an average day uh, we've gone to a couple accidents uh, some we saw and some we didn't on, on, on tape but yeah uh, because some of the accidents we went to the people didn't want to be on either right. and we can't use anything unless people give their permission right so uh, uh, we did we did we did have pretty much an average day we wrote some tickets we helped some 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 motors who were broken down, we went to some accidents. Uh, so we got actually a little bit of everything. We didn't get any DUI drivers today or so far. I still have a little, long, a little time to go yeah, today. Yeah, because it's just six o'clock. You've right. got another three and a half hours. Exactly, so we might find one. Well, I'll tell you what, it has been an average day, but for us, it's been more than an average day. Well, because I'm, I'm not it. trying to lavish compliments on you, <laughs> but I think that all of us have learned a lot more about the Highway Patrol, and I can tell you, if every police officer was as professional and as good-hearted and as conscientious as you are, uh, we'd all be in great shape. And I know that you really represent the very best um, but that there are a lot of good officers out there doing exactly the good job you do day in and day out. There are a lot of good officers. This department's made up of a lot of really good people. Well, you deserve our support. Well, thank you very and much. And we thank you very much for inviting us to come along with you. This wasn't exactly the real stories of the Highway <laughs> Patrol, <laughs> but uh, it was exciting for us, uh, and we are delighted to have been invited to come along with you. And I think we have all learned a lot about the very professional and conscientious job done day in and day out by the men and women of the California Highway Patrol. Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.